And we begin with a slew of kidnappings in the country. Gunmen have abducted an Anglican bishop of Jeba Diocese, Reverend Ulua Shin Adirogba, and his wife, and the driver. The victims were abducted on Sunday along the new Oyo Bumosho Expressway in Oyo State. The police public relations officer of the state command has confirmed the incident. Preliminary investigations reveal that the victim's vehicle broke down while traveling from Yewa in Ogun State to Jeba in Kwara State. The Deputy Commissioner of Police in charge of operations has been directed to take over the operation to rescue the victims. And another clergyman, the parish priest of St. Anthony Catholic Church in Jos, Plateau State, has been abducted. Police say Reverend Father James Kantoma was kidnapped on Sunday night at the church's uh, vicarage in Angware, Jos, East local government area. Well, officers and men from the anti-kidnapping unit have been deployed to the community. Reverend Kantoma is also the chairman of the Christian Association of Nigeria in the local government. And at least 29 people have been kidnapped on their way to Zamfara State after attending a wedding ceremony in the neighboring Sokoto State. The incident occurred along the axis of the Tureta local government area of Sokoto and Lamba Bakura in Zamfara State after the vehicle they boarded became faulty. An eyewitness who spoke on condition of anonymity says they came under fire while they were driving slowly to fix the broken vehicle. Chairman of the Nigerian Union of Communications and for our state chapter says majority of the victims are members and the terrorists have called to notify them that they are in their custody. After spending more than 40 minutes fixing the clutch of our bus, we continue our journey from Lumber Trade to Lumber Bakura. Then we started hearing gunshots. I immediately jumped out of the bus through the window. But because of fear and confusion, others were unable to open the bus door. But four other people also jumped, as I did, out of the 35 of us, because we left two others in Sokotu. So the remaining 29 were the ones that were adopted. The terrorists were not able to get to the second bus because of our number, but they shot and wounded two other people. But all the 21 passengers in the second bus were lucky to escape. Call for the government. We have seen the effort they are doing during the primary elections that conducted recent. So we want them to give these issues serious attention. They should come back to their bureau state. They should start negotiations or use the security personnel to see that they bring those members back to their respective family. Because those people are very important to the community. So we are appealing. We know they have done their best and they are doing. But still, we are calling for them. They should put more effort on this. Well, for more on these stories, the Nigeria's worsening security crisis, uh, we have in the studio with us security expert and CEO of security firm Beacon Consulting. And later, we'll be joined by Abdurrahman Abdullahi Dutsima, who is the chairman of the Coalition of Civil Society Organizations in Katsina State. Well, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, Kabiru Adamu, Dr. Kabiru Adamu, uh, on the news. Let me just begin by asking you if there is any pattern to these abductions we're seeing. I mean, do we understand why wedding guests will be kidnapped or train passengers or religious leaders are targeted? Is there a pattern? Um, not necessarily a pattern, but um, there may be um, reasons behind the kidnapping. Let me start with the religious leaders. Mm -hmm. A few weeks ago, when the prelate of the Methodist Church, His Eminence, was interviewed incidentally by your station, we analyzed that interview and we said we wish we could reach him. We would have to told him to tone down of some of the revelations mm -hmm. that he made in that interview, mentioning that an amount of about 100 million was paid 
is an incentivization for targeting of that particular mm. group. Uh, kidnappers want money if the if, 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 if the, the incentive is financial, and they are hearing from someone who was abducted that 100 million was paid. Mm. So we knew that unfortunately that group, uh, you know, would be targeted. Now with regards to the incident in between Tureta and Bakura in Sokoto and Zamfara State, um, we know based on our risk assessment and profiling of heat uh, maps along um, routes in Nigeria that any time a vehicle breaks down, um, that vehicle or the passengers of that vehicle are likely to be targeted. So one of the things we tell people is make sure when you're traveling, the vehicle you're using is... How do you tell your car not to break down today? <laughs> well, you, you service it before uh, you, I know. You, you travel. I think it's really interesting you should bring up that point because um, at first I really thought it was, you know, more of targeted kidnappings, just like you said. Um, it, seems, it seems maybe to them it was easy for um, the prelate, you know, and the church to raise an amount of money so it's easy to go after someone along that line. Mm -hmm. But then... It seems as if it's just a clear case of insecurity, or I fear to say it's all, it seems like a lost cause because what I'm trying the point I'm trying to make is their vehicles broke down mm -hmm. and these guys showed up, mm -hmm. meaning they are littered everywhere. It could have been anyone. Is no, that it? Or no. are these really targeted kidnappers? I know that, um, that particular route is my state. Yeah. So I know oh. the location very well. Okay. Um, there is a vast uh, what, are, what we all call ungoverned space, yeah. the forested parts. And the moment you leave Bakura up until you reach Tureta, it's a vast open land. On the one hand, it would seem really uh, inconceivable that a group of persons on bikes, you know, 20, 30, 100, would move in that vast space and they are not being detected. Yeah. On the other hand, because it's an open space, yeah. uh, savanna, as it were, then you know that mobility there, especially on bikes, is easy and they can move, come to the road, kidnap a person and then move back into the, that ungoverned space together with them. So in, in a nutshell, this, the existence of these ungoverned spaces and the ability of these um, non-state actors, armed non-state actors, to move freely within the ungoverned space is why we are having what we are so, having. Is this a lost cause? Sorry, yeah. Yeah. Is this a lost cause? Of course really? it's not. Of course it's not. How do you say that when every day is a new case coming up? I mean, this month has really been bloody from the church massacre. This doesn't even talk about, of course, your report and the killings that took place last month. Yeah. It's a, every day you wake up, there is something terrorists are having a field day. Is it a lost cause? When I saw you guys, I thought um, your color was actually a reflection of the mood. It's a coincidence, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. Coincidence. Hey, come to think of it. Yeah, um, it's not a lost cause. Uh, what, like I told you the last time I was in your uh, studio, um, what we need to do is introduce accountability within the security architecture. People get kidnapped and nobody's held accountable. Somebody, that stretch of route that I mentioned, somebody is responsible for providing security on that stretch of route. That person should be asked critical questions. Was he on duty? How come um, 29 persons, from what I'm hearing, were ab abducted? I'm hearing a different figure from sources on the ground. Now that person, person should be asked critical questions. There are 29 ministries, departments, and agencies involved in security. When something like that happens, questions should be asked. Otherwise, yeah. it would continue. So going forward, uh -huh. you know, especially as we approach um, the elections, I'm hoping to hear that narrative from uh, the, the candidates, the, the, the candidates um, that they are going to introduce in fact, m and &E, monitoring and evaluation mechanisms yeah. within the security sector so that when we give you money as the leader of a particular yeah. security department, this is what you would do. If you don't do it, then this is what we'll do to you. So Interestingly, because I, I was looking at your reports for May, which you just released, and compared to the previous month, you actually say there was a significant reduction uh, in incidents, fatalities, and abductions. Um, but again... How do we sustain that? Because it doesn't look, I mean, I'm not preempting your next report, but it doesn't look like we've been able to sustain that reduction. So what is it we're not doing rightly? I also want to ask you about communication and surveillance. The Nigerian government embarked on a vigorous uh, effort to ensure citizens link their seams to their name. What's the effect of that? How come we cannot trace these bandits, these terrorists, they kidnap people, they call for ransom, we cannot take the fights to them? Is, is that the problem? Um, let me start from your well, prediction as, as it yes. were. Um, so throughout last year, 
2021, mm -hmm. uh, from January to December, the figure for monthly figure hovered around um, 900, mm -hmm. there about, uh, except for I think April mm -hmm. when it reached at uh, 1,300 or, or there about. Now, since the beginning of this year, it's been above a thousand. For last year, it was 1,400. So we're going back to where we were in, in 2021. And it doesn't, frankly, it's not really an improvement because yeah. these are 900 persons that are being killed. But what the report does, it tells us what government um, effort measures resulted in that reduction. Mm. So if we do a scientific approach, we're able to determine that if we sustain a particular effort, then we're going to see further reduction. Now, in this instance, it is military efforts, almost squarely that okay. led to this reduction. But unfortunately, the military efforts are quite expensive. And we know that, especially given the current economic circumstances that we're in, it will be a little bit difficult to sustain that level of military operations. Mm -hmm. The second element is the what I call the reversal that we're monitoring in the northeast of the country. Um, last year, through January, we, um, the northeast saw massive reduction. Unfortunately, from February, March into April and May, we saw increase in incidents in the northeast, and mainly because of a campaign, two campaigns that were, was launched by Islamic State in West Africa province, what they call the revenge of the two, uh, killing of the two sheikhs, mm -hmm. and then what they are calling economic warfare. So they are carrying out different attacks as a result of that, and then that is leading to an, to an increase. But um, to answer the second part of your question, how do we sustain these gains? Mm -hmm. um, first off, uh, better collaboration between the federal and state government. This cannot be done by the federal government alone. The state governments will need to take up an aspect of this warfare. Now there is a lacuna in our constitution in the sense that it is um, the federal um, government that is responsible for security. So perhaps we need to, as mm. a way going forward, look critically at, at that. Yeah. But beyond that, we also, we also need to see an improvement in regional cooperation among certain states, specifically in the Northwest. Now if you look at the Southwest, there is some level of cooperation. Southeast, some level of cooperation, but Northwest, frankly, not that much. Now the uh, irony of the Northwest is that the forest, the so-called ungoverned species okay. that I spoke about earlier on, traverses the states in the northwest. So even if one state is effective, if the other, the other is not, these guys are able to move almost freely. Now it's unfortunable to me that almost um, say 10 years down the road, the northwest state governors have not deemed it fit to come together and address this issue as one. The third element is our cooperation with our neighboring countries, Niger, Chad, and to an extent Cameroon. Um, some of this forest that I discussed actually traverses fa further mm -hmm. into Niger. So we need to establish further cooperation with that. Then there are issues around climate change, proliferation of small arms and light weapons, our justice system that is failing to arrest and punish offenders, um, drug addiction, um, name them, things like that. So for us to sustain this effort, we need to look critically at well, that. Well, let you go, just to go back to your report on the issue of reduction and reversals in some of the numbers we did see, is it really a case of Re, you know, reductions or just a case of unreported kidnappings and killings? Which is it? Um, I'm quite confident with our collection capabilities. Uh, t t you know, I can't discuss the details of intelligence collection here, but I'm quite confident with our collection capabilities. Um, the, it, it goes through industry respected standards before we arrive at the data that but we But are there arrive. incidents that happen undetected? Is it, it's it possible? Po it, it's possible. But then what we present is a reflection of what happened. In fact, we have a uh, caveat there within our report mm -hmm. that there are possibilities that we missed out certain elements. But based on these in industry standards, we're confident that what we've presented is um, you know, scientific too. And, uh, uh, just <coughs> to my question on communication and surveillance, uh, I mean the same and the, the, the mean identification linkage, how much uh, of an impact is that having on the fight against insecurity? Is it having any impact at all? How come we cannot trace uh, communication and surveillance to get these people to book? We I can. mean, a lot was put into that. Yes. Um, we can. Um, Time will not allow me to go into the full <laughs> details of what um, surveillance and um, you know this cyber security space can contribute to security. Incidentally, in Mr. President's um, Democracy Day speech, he actually referred to it uh, as a success within his government. So we know that he has invested quite hugely in that. Yeah. The worry is that in a democratic era, 
there are concerns regarding uh, privacy mm. within the cyberspace and on surveillance. So that's one issue that we need to address. The second issue is cooperation within the security agencies. In my honest opinion, and with all sense of uh, you know, responsibility, I think the major security departments are yet to see the relevance of the Communications Commission uh, you know, as a contributor mm. or a force multiplier to their, to their impact. In fact, they see it as a rival agency. So we also need to address that. How do they embrace the various support that the Ministry of um, um, Communications and Digital Technology can, con can support them in mm -hmm. terms of their knowledge. I think um, right now, a lot of these agencies have surveillance and cyber security capability, but there is no harmonization of that effort. The main body that can harmonize that effort is that, is that ministry. And so perhaps going forward, we need to see how as a country we can em embed um, that ministry into the security architecture. That is yet to be done, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for joining us on News Tonight and, of course, for clarification on that report and what's playing out in our security situation. We'll be talking to the CEO of Beacon Consulting, Dr. Kabiru Adamu.